peace of the Lord be with you all as we gather on this Palm Sunday to mark the beginning of Holy Week. And as we come together in community worship this day, we recall that the light of Christ shines with us as we worship. And so as a, a visible symbol and reminder of that light of Christ shining as we worship, let us bring the light of Christ into this space in this time together. Enter now into Holy Week with palms and shouts of joy. On the horizon, we know there is darkness. Maundy Thursday and Good Friday loom in the shadows just ahead. Before today, light is shining. Christ enters Jerusalem once more. There is celebration and rejoicing. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. It is this celebration that we could become part of this day. And so as we enter into Palm Sunday and the Palm Sunday procession once more, let us turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds are saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the Gospel of Christ. There are certain images that come to my mind when I think of the Palm Sunday Parade. I think of Jesus on the road approaching the walls of Jerusalem, riding slowly on his donkey, surrounded at first by his usual friends and followers, but gaining an increasing crowd as he gets closer and closer to the city until people are just lining the road, jostling for position and straining their necks to catch a glimpse of this Jesus from Nazareth. I think of countless palms waving, of cloaks lining the road, a joyful cacophony of sound and color and energy as Jesus makes this momentous entry, entry into Jerusalem. This is my image 
but my image is not necessarily reflective of the actual events of Palm Sunday. The Apostle Matthew tells us that a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road as Jesus entered into the city. Many Bible translations, however, have a footnote to this phrase. His translators don't actually know how to correctly translate this from the original Greek. It's, it's obscure. And so it can either be translated as a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, or as most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road. A very large crowd versus most of the crowd. Either translation tells us that there is a crowd present, but the second translation, most of the crowd, doesn't actually tell us anything about the size. And the reality is that my own mental images of a huge crowd of colorful, joyful, noisily, optimistically defiant people lining the road for Jesus is quite probably not actually what happened. Jesus was entering Jerusalem during a time of year where there was a height of tension in the city. It was the beginning of Passover, the Jewish festival commemorating the exodus out of the slavery of Egypt in the time of Moses. And as Passover celebrated the past liberation of Israel from a foreign oppressive power, that is Egypt, it is understandable why Israel's current foreign oppressive power, that is the Roman Empire, was uneasy about any liberation sentiments that Passover might stir up. And yet for Rome to forbid the celebration of such an important festival as Passover would be in itself a risk to foment civil unrest amidst the Jewish people. And so the Romans found themselves in a bit of a bind on what to do about Passover. Their solution was simply to allow Passover to be celebrated, but to send a large and very conspicuous, that is very visible, number of extra soldiers into the city of Jerusalem for the duration of the festival. The soldiers being on high alert for any signs of unrest or uprising and prepared to quash such signs quickly and with decisive force. And so with this context in mind, as we think of the Palm Sunday parade, we can pretty easily hypothesize that a large crowd of mostly Jewish people lining the road to celebrate Jesus entering a city already on high alert, declaring Jesus a prophet of the Jewish God, declaring him an heir to the Jewish king, King David, throwing their coats onto the ground in front of him like a, some sort of Jewish royalty, we can bet that that would not have gone over terribly well with the very Roman soldiers who were stationed in the city at the time. And yet the gospel makes no mention of any Roman intervention on Palm Sunday. None of the gospel texts do. The Australian pastor, Andrew Pryor, thinks it is likely that the group that gathered outside Jerusalem to welcome Jesus into the city on that Palm Sunday was actually a small and rather ragtag group. Small and ragtag and seemingly unthreatening enough to not warrant any attention or concern by the hyper-vigilant Roman legions. It's a jarring thought that the Palm Sunday parade and procession with quite probably just a few gathered folks on the road, an assorted handful of people 
with a few palm branches and a few cloaks spread out. It's a bit disorienting to think of it in that way. And yet I like this conception of Palm Sunday better. That the small group that gathered with Jesus on the road was too small and simply too insignificant for the mighty Roman Empire to care about. And yet was important enough and significant enough that it has become a vital part of scripture and the Holy Week story. Clearly, God's conception of what is important differed quite substantially from Rome's conception of what was important. And indeed, God through Christ has never been about wealth or might, power or popularity. Throughout his ministry, Jesus hung out with the outsiders and the nobodies, the fishermen and the tax collectors, the women and the foreigners, the lepers. He himself was a peasant from a small town called Nazareth. He was an itinerant agitator. He rubbed a lot of people, a lot of powerful people, the wrong way. He rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. Not a majestic, powerful horse, but a simple, humble donkey. And so in that context, a, a very small and conspicuous group meeting Jesus with probably inconspicuous shouts of Hosanna on the road into Jerusalem makes sense. It's fitting. These were likely powerless, vulnerable people doing the best they could under the very limiting, very challenging circumstances of their time. And as has always been the case, their best was more than enough for God. If all they could offer was a small ragtag greeting into the city, well, we know from scripture that that was more than enough to God. And that is good news for us. Because our limiting and challenging circumstances, because our feelings of vulnerability and powerlessness right now, mean that we ourselves could not have a big Palm Sunday parade for Jesus either. Just as the motley crew of Palm Sunday gathers welcome Jesus to the city as best as they could, so we are doing the best as we can in celebrating Palm Sunday during a, a challenging upheaval time. And so we too, come with the knowledge and the faith that we are doing as best as we can and in that we are doing what is more than enough for God. God has never been about power and might. In fact, God has always been most present in times of challenge and in times of vulnerability. And so as we traverse these difficult times, know that God is with us and that God expects only of us what we are capable of doing. God expects that we worship and pray only as we are able, that we help others and reach out only as we are able. And if the biggest thing that we are able to do right now is to simply stay home, then that is more than enough in the eyes of God. The reality is that on this Palm Sunday, we join together with that ragtag group of followers on the road to Jerusalem. We join in all our difficult circumstances and all our vulnerability and powerlessness right now. And together we welcome Jesus once more. We do it without power, we do it without grandeur. We do it simply as we are able at this time. And in God that is more than enough.
And so blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. As we are able to offer ourselves to God right now, that is more, much more than enough. So thanks be to God. Amen. What we do is indeed more than enough for God. And so I want to take a moment now to uplift and to seek blessing for the many offerings being shared by the City View community at this time. So may God bless the financial offerings made through PAR, through checks mailed into the church, and through online donations made through CanadaHelps.org for all who are able to donate financially during this time. Blessings and thank you to you. And for each of us, with the countless ways that offerings are being made right now, with the, the incredible talent and time and care that is being shared right now. Blessings and thanksgiving to you as well. This community has been amazing. And as we continue through this time of trial, may God bless all the offerings that are given. And may God's light continue to shine throughout all that we offer. Amen. great blessings of gathering in worship is that we are able to pray together and to share our collective energy in our prayers. And so on this day, I want to simply leave space for you to pray as in all the ways that you need to pray right now. Because I think that we all have a lot of prayers to share into our collective energy of prayer. So whether you share those prayers out loud or within the silence of your heart, your prayers are part of our prayers, our, our shared prayers together this day. They are to be uplifted to God and will be heard by God. And so into this time of silence, I invite you to lift up your prayers now of concern, of care, and of hope. Let us pray. Lord, may you hear our prayers this day. And as we offer prayers and concern, prayers of care, prayers of hope, let us also offer our prayers of thanksgiving, recognizing that we are blessed in many ways. So I, I invite you now into the sacred silence to offer those prayers of gratitude
Lord, hear our prayers. And gracious God, hear all the prayers we offer this day. Prayers of concern and care and hope, prayers of blessing and thanksgiving. As we offer our prayers to you, may you respond in light and love to the prayers of this community. As we offer our prayers of hope, as we offer our prayers of gratitude and concern, as we offer prayers of light, let us together now speak the words of Christ, who is himself the light of the world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. blessing. Go now in peace. Go now knowing that you are held, you are loved, you are light in this world. Go forth in light, go forth in love. Hallelujah. Amen.